Last time I checked, the push rods were supposed to be straight. No shit, Sherlock. My ride, YouTubers. Welcome back. My name's Dave. You found. Do it yourself. Do it right. And it's July 4th weekend. Revolution. Which means on the 4th, it was three years now since I started this channel. And well, got my Ford hat on. Ford there with the hood up. We got a not good situation, unfortunately. Uh, so let's get into it. remember from the previous video I told you I had a valve cover leak uh, one of those the driver's side was leaking pretty profusely uh, I went up to a car show yeah I won top 25 I got a 25 plackets over there somewhere on the shelf anyways on the way back the car started running really badly like dog poop And uh, so I brought it in here. I was like, well, I know the valve cover's leaking, so let me try to fix that. And uh, had to order a new gasket set because the other one, well, whatever. Anyways, so while I was sitting here with the gasket uh, on order, I was like, well, why is it running like crap? Or why did it start running like crap? So I thought that it was vapor locking again because this car has had... It's infamous for vapor locking. So I went in and changed the way this little heat tubing shrink stuff is. And I thought to myself, well, I got the valve cover off. Let me go ahead and look at the valves. Look at the, you know, make sure, make sure all that's okay. Cause it's, you know, it started clicking again. It started basically sounding like a diesel truck again. And uh, I've already, did the valve lash on it a couple of times. Uh, going way back, if you remember, this engine was rebuilt uh, way back in the day, like 2007. And, you know, my father had never gotten it running again. So I figured, well, maybe stuff's, you know, expanding, contracting, running and getting, you know, getting more use. So let me look at the valves. Let me look at the push rods. Let me, you know, make sure that nothing is going wrong. And well, I found some stuff wrong and stuff that I found I found wrong were push rods this push rod is bent yeah you, know, you know it's not supposed to be oh this one this one's even better and you could see on the push rod that there's wear right there it's nice and shiny on that one same on this one and that's where my clicking clacking making it sound like a diesel truck come from so i pulled these two because they're obviously bent and then i was like oh well, let me pull the other valve cover make sure that there's not any more bent and i th suspect if i put this one on a dial indicator that it too would be bent so i mean it's not nearly as bad as the other one so what i did was i went on the old interwebs and i ordered three rods push rods that's these guys here well when i got them they're the wrong size god damn it length is different <sighs> little you know i guess if i would have paid a little bit more attention to some of the postings you know it said that the you know it's two different sizes is you know blah 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 and of course my luck i ordered the wrong sizes so then i had to order 
another set another well i ordered a whole set i ordered all 16 i'm like you know what i'm just gonna change them all uh-huh and how long have you thought that the whole time i've thought that the whole time so here's a whole set same size as the originals so that's that's what i'm gonna do today i'm going to sit here in a nice hot muggy garage with little airflow and bend over this engine and pull every push rod and replace it oh that sucks dude because i don't want to take a chance that there's other push rods in there that are slightly bent <sighs> so that's what I'm doing probably all day and then obviously I'm gonna have to valve lash them again and I'm going to you know basically do it by the book so I don't mess it up now I don't know if when I valve lashed them I got it wrong got it too tight or something and that made those two get bent I don't I don't know hopefully there's not more internal damage in the engine because that would not be good i whoo, baby, i don't even want to think about it all i want to think about right now is turning the fan on getting some air moving and just getting to work just putting my head down work i'm going to set you guys up if i find some more bent i'll show you if not i'll come back and you know explain the valve lash procedure because you roll the engine over and to her level and the next one on the other side. I'll, sh I'll go over the firing order, pair them together so you can, you know, I basically explain it. So, <sighs> enough talking. Let's get working. off me bug <sighs> all right well <clears throat> let's just say I'm glad that I bought a whole set of push rods cuz well I suspect or I don't really suspect I uh, know that I found one more that is just completely bent. Bent twice. It looks like it's been bent and then bent again. Kind of more like a hockey stick, you know, like slap shot. Look at you cracking jokes, you cool little cucumber. That's how much it's bent. Got a couple others that could possibly be bent. That was problem number one. <sighs> problem number two. And something I'm going to say is that, you know, if, uh, if you don't have much mechanical abilities, I wouldn't recommend doing this job. Not that it's difficult, because it's really not that difficult, but because, well, in my case, I just keep running into problems after problem, after pop one you gotta I didn't realize this but you gotta take cotter pins out to move washers so you can slide the the you know the rocker arms that are on each end you gotta move those you gotta take those loose and you know so it's it's not a quick not a quick process and then you run into stuff like this which I don't even know if I can fix this so I'm gonna try 
basically what this is is I think somebody uh, I think they you know uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. anyways this is um, this might be a problem I had to go all the way up to work to get my tap and die set because after putting all the new push rods in I'm going through and I'm you know I'm setting I'm setting the uh, the valve lash I know I was gonna tell you about the valve lash but then I decided I was like well I'm just gonna refer you to a video so this is where I'm gonna refer you to a valve lash video guy really does a good job I don't really think I can explain it better uh, so I'm gonna send you to that video so you can do your own valve lashing so when I was in the process of doing the valve lash I really you know I found that on the second to last valve this one didn't want to tighten actually I barely loosened it so then I you know was doing my thing and did all my thing move stuff out of the way and then went to tighten it down and I was, it was like <coughs> and I was like oh that's not good uh-oh so Hopefully I can clean these threads up. As you can see, it's kind of dark here and then really there. Well, that's because I had to use some brute force to get the nut off. And then it doesn't look stripped, but I uh, got my tap and die set. And now I'm going to see if I can clean it up to where I can at least use this during lunch. I went on the old interwebs. I was just going to order another one of these, but they're hard to find. Almost impossible, actually. Didn't find the one that I um, that I'm. I didn't find the ones that I'm using. I found other ones, and I don't want to mismatch. So here's to trying to get this one to work. I think the nut can be saved. Hopefully the uh, hopefully the adjuster can also be saved. Throw a little bit of all over cushion in there. That's what she said. This uh, gear wrench tap and die set. Let me tell you. It's gotten me out of a couple of pickles, you know what I'm saying? Got my 7 16 by 20. Because that's what this thread is. And I'm going to see if I can get that to clean up these threads. Give her a little lube. Uh, I, don't, I don't have high hopes for this. Hmm. I wish I had a way that I could just use the ratchet part of the... Thing. But I have no way of holding that. At least I don't think I do. Maybe with the nut cleaned up, maybe I can get it started on the other end and then I can thread and then put it in that. Maybe, uh, okay, so maybe I can, now that this nut is clean, start it on here. No, because it's not going to do its thing. Oh, shit, well, I just I literally just thread it all the way on there. I don't even need to clean up the threads. All right, so let's get in on the car, finish the uh, uh, the valve lashing, and uh, you know I'll get you in on the in the engine compartment so you can so I can show you the parts and pieces that I was talking about just a second ago. Whew. All right, valve lash is done. I actually ran through it twice just to verify. No, there's no. No harm in verifying. Uh, I do want to kind of explain the valve lash a little bit, uh, but I I still want you to go to the other dude's website. I believe his I believe the YouTube channel is the the Y Block guy. So 
and he knows his stuff. And the video is, is pretty good. It's not the greatest, but it's pretty good. Uh, so start with valve lash. The firing order for a Y block is one, five, four, eight, six, three, seven, two. Okay, and he'll explain to you, he puts it over top of each other like this. And he's got a cool little diagram and it tells you, you know, top dead center and this and that and look for this and look for that. So basically what he's explaining is you can get your Lone Wolf 5000, as Derek Berry calls it from Vice Grip Garage, uh, and you roll the engine over with this and you watch these. So um, just to kind of touch on his video just a bit to do the valve lash properly uh, two two cylinders are at top dead center whatever at the same time you want to adjust them when they're at top dead top dead center so basically what he says the reason why he broke it down like this is you watch cylinder six so cylinder five cylinder six you can see that the uh, the uh, exhaust valve is open, it's pushing down, so that means it's open. What you want to watch for is when you roll the engine over that this valve comes up and your intake just barely starts to open. And what that means is then number one cylinder over here is then at top dead center and you can adjust the valve. So let's watch it real quick like this one right here. This one is six. This is the exhaust valve. That one should start coming up, which would be closing the valve. The intake valve will start to go down, which will be opening it. And you want to stop it just as the intake valve starts to open. So here we go. Coming up, up, up oh, there. Intake valve just started to go down. Now what that means is you're at top dead center and I'm hot. And then you come over here and you adjust the number one valves you can adjust them both at the same time now mine are kind of a pain because you got to loosen the jam nut hold the flat with a flat tip make your adjustments obviously in here you measure here and here you measure in this play now in his video he's doing a 312 this is a 272. Look at yours if you're a 292, whatever, the valve lash. I don't think a 292 is any different than a 272. Uh, he's talking about setting his to 19 thousandths. Uh, the book calls for 18 thousandths on this one, so I set it at a, at a, uh, at a loose 18 thousandths, if you, you know what I'm saying. It's kind of loose. So, that's valve lash, and then you just keep going. So then you go to the next one, all right? So you watch six, so you can adjust one. Now you watch three, so you can adjust five. So watch three over here, one, two, three. You can see that that valve is down. Where'd my Lone Wolf 5000 go? Over here. And you watch that valve start to come up, coming up. The other one starts to go down. And now you adjust cylinder five this guy right here so on and so forth now to get the uh let me wipe off some of my sweat here sorry it's very hot in here it's it's pretty nasty for new york right now it's like 86 degrees and like 95 thousand percent humidity all right to get all these push rods out uh basically you just loosen the inboard ones up and you can move move the valve out of the way. Well, this one, which this one, you can move it out of the way, um, and then pull your push rod out. Well, on the end ones here, get on the end ones here. You see this cotter pin with the washer. There's actually two washers and then a spring washer to keep it spring loaded. So you got to pull that cotter pin out. Take these washers off. Make sure you don't lose anything. Make sure you have cotter pins to go back in. And then you got to do it here, way back in there, that one over there, this one here. The one's up against the firewall. Not fun, but not difficult, you know. Well, 
I guess, to me, I guess it's really not that difficult. I've gotten myself into closer quarters working on helicopters and stuff. <sighs> now that all that's done, let's put the valve covers on and let's start this thing up. See if that diesel clicking sound has gone away. All right, valve covers are on. Let's hope and pray that I didn't hurt anything else. Uh, let's do it. Wow. I'm uh, just so you're wondering why I'm not using my lone wolf. Because if this thing fires off and it makes a lot of <laughs> noise, I want to be able to shut it off. leaking oil again. I don't see anything yet, but I'll definitely keep an eye on it. It definitely sounds better than the last time I ran. Uh, I barely made it home from the car show. I ducked off onto a couple of back streets and kind of idled back here. Ah, damn. Uh, it's uh, never done that really, not that bad. So, I mean, three really badly bent valves, or not valves, but three very badly bent push rods. And maybe, maybe it was, maybe it was uh, vapor locking. I don't know. I'm going to try an old old timers trick other than that. I'm going to put a couple of clothes pins back on the fuel line. They say that uh, the clothes pins, you know, they absorb the heat and dissipate the heat off the fuel line. So we're going to, you know, we'll give it a go. Why not? Can't hurt, really. Can't really hurt anything. Uh, let's, uh, let's, put the, let's put the air cleaner on it. Get the Nissan out the way, get the light out of here, and uh, go sweat some more because it's uh, hot and sunny out there. And, you know, the basically giant sunroof is, uh, you know, always trying to kill me. So let's, um, let's do that. much better. Man, it sounds better. Just walking around it outside with the hood down, the air cleaner on, it is much quieter than it was before. I mean, you hear the exhaust, but... 
up front here it is a lot quieter than it was i don't know maybe those maybe those rods push rods were always bent i don't i don't know but it is definitely a lot quieter and sounding a lot smoother let's uh let's take her down the street i'm gonna take it around the back streets before i take it out on the main road just in case it wants to act up i started to have an issue I think right after the uh, the Johnstown show, and what happened at the Johnstown show is it took forever to get us all parked, and it got up to about 190. It might have touched 200, and then I drove it back and forth to work and didn't really have any issues, and then went up to the. Uh, the, the car show up at Lansy's on the lake, which was a beautiful car show, by the way. It was it was very nice. Uh, got top 25 out of, I don't know, there must have been 150 cars there. So I was pretty, uh, pretty happy with that. But then on the way back, I got into town and it was, it was not doing good. Now we're just going to cruise the back road. I always take it slow around this corner because you never know if another car is coming. Dang, Dang old squirrel. might have his, the idol sitting too low. Through the throttle, it seems to throttle up. Okay. I don't really drive too fast down this road because it's a lot of bumps. I just did notice one thing. The odometer is actually moving. I guess that got fixed when I fixed the speedometer. These people never want to stop at that stop sign. It's like stop signs around here you know it's it's optional there you have it folks it's back up and running at least for now <sighs> you know it's old cars what can i say it's uh you drive them you enjoy them and then you work on them or you have to pay somebody to work on them uh you know, it'd be uh, it'd be nice if it was well sorted and I could just get in and turn the key and, you know, go to shows and whatnot. But, you know, this, this is what happens when cars sit for, well, well over, it was well over 12, 10, 12, let me do the math in my head. I'm not very good at it. You know, it was 13 years, give or take a few. It's what happens, you know, stuff stuff happens you know you got to fix this and you got to fix that and then that wears out or you know you got to adjust this or that i'm still fighting a carburetor issue uh i'm half tempted to take the carburetor off send it into uh to this guy that rebuilds them it's 400 bucks uh they look like a million bucks when they get back so i'm i might i might go ahead and do that just because i think the carburetor is not set properly uh, the guy will take it, clean it, 
put the jets in it that's supposed to be in it for this car get it you know bench dialed in and then i would just have to do the you know just a little bit of tweaks here and there but uh, you know that's another 400 dollars out of the pocket so you know do i do it do i not do it do i well, you know i'm still up in the air i still think i still want to send this car to get restored so you know that's it's part of the game it's part of the fun with old cars so if you like old cars you like tinkering on them you know give me a like tag you know share follow subscribe you know i know 90 percent of you guys that are watching the videos they're not subscribed you know youtube does a great job you know analytics tells me hey you're, you're you got 90 percent new viewers but nobody's subscribing so uh subscribe it's free it doesn't cost you a dollar it doesn't cost you a dime it doesn't cost you a penny just hit the button that's all so like i always say like tag share follow subscribe hit that notification bell and like always till next time thanks a lot Thank you.